Often in mathematics it's necessary to add up the terms of a sequence. Here I've written down the sequence of the first five natural numbers and added them up to get 15. We could repeat the procedure instead using the squares of the natural numbers. 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared plus 5 squared. Let's stop at 5 again. If we add those up we would get 55. Now already, although there were only five squares to add on the left-hand side, it was becoming tedious writing down each term separately. It would be really convenient if we had a form of notation that told us what to do on the left-hand side. It should say what kind of things are being added up, using what rule, and where to start, and where to finish. I'd like to introduce the capital letter S from the Greek alphabet. It's written like this, and it is pronounced sigma. When we see a sigma symbol in mathematics, we should understand that the things to the right of it are to be added up according to the rule shown there. Let's see how this might work. Let's do it for the sequence of natural numbers 1 to 5. I could write it as sigma. Now we want natural numbers. Let's give them a name. How about n? So it's saying we add up things of the kind n and then we have to say where n starts starting at 1 and where does it stop? At 5. This notation stands for the sum 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. Of course the answer is still 15. Following our new notation we could now write the sum of squares in a similar way. We'd need a sigma symbol. But this time we have to say that we're adding up squares of natural numbers. Again starting at 1 and finishing at 5. The answer is still 55 of course. Let's do a third example but this time let's just write down the sigma notation and see if we can work out what it means. Here we have the sum of, I'm going to start at 1 again and finish maybe at 4 this time just to make less writing. I'm going to have each natural number divided by the next natural number. On seeing this we should understand that we start with n equals 1 and substitute the value 1. That gives us a half. Then we move on and substitute the value 2 then 3, and we keep going until we reach the highest value on the sum, which is the 4 at the top, and so our last thing to add is 4 fifths. You can add those up if you like. Up to now, we've only used n for the thing appearing in the sum and for the, and for the label. Different mathematicians in different books use many different labels. Labels in common use include i, J, K, L, M, N. In fact, you can use any label you like as long as you use it consistently throughout the sum. Also up to now, we've only included the actual label N in the things to be summed. But other terms and other kinds of symbol can appear inside a sum. Consider the following. Let's start at, let's use label I for a change and start at zero. Nothing wrong with starting at zero. Let's go as far as, let's say, six this time. But now I'm going to put a symbol X and put the label on the power. Now what we should understand is that this is telling us to do X to the power zero plus X to the one plus X squared plus X cubed plus X to the four plus x to the 5, and finally we stop at 6. If you've heard of something called the geometric series, you may recognize this as the first seven terms of the geometric series. Normally we would write x to the naught as 1, and we also would just write x to the 1 as x, and the other terms would be the same. If you haven't heard of the geometric series, it doesn't matter. 
it's just important that you understand what the notation of the sigma notation means. Something else that often happens is that we have to continue adding the sum indefinitely. It just doesn't stop. We need a way of saying that without actually writing out all the terms. Obviously if we wanted to write an infinite number of terms we'd need an infinite length of paper. Very impractical. When we want the sum to continue indefinitely we can use the infinity symbol on top. I'll use the same example of x to the i. What we understand here now is that we have 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed and we can use a sequence of dots or dashes to show that it continues forever. Again, if you're familiar with the geometric series, you'll know that under certain conditions this actually converges to the function 1 over 1 minus x. This works for x values between negative 1 and 1. We can write that as absolute value of x less than 1. By convergence we mean that if we keep on adding up the terms then the sum will get closer and closer to the value of the function 1 over 1 minus x in this case for each value of x but it only works when x is between minus 1 and 1. If that's not familiar to you though it doesn't matter. I want to emphasize it's the summation notation that we're aiming to understand here. I'd like to conclude with one last observation and that concerns again the symbol infinity. It's really important to understand that infinity is not a number. It is never right to write something like x equals infinity. It makes no sense. Even if the thing we're talking about is a label, i or n, writing i equals infinity or n equals infinity does not make sense. So what should we really understand when we write a sum to infinity. Well, what we really mean by this is we're cutting corners and what we've actually got is the sum from i equals naught to some large value n and we have the concept of taking the limit as n approaches infinity. This is saying that we just keep on adding up the terms to n and we let n get bigger and bigger. In fact, whenever you see the symbol infinity, you should always understand that it implies some kind of limit. And the only time you will ever see something set equal to infinity is when the object on the left is a limit. This concludes my discussion of the summation notation.